Hello everyone, this is João. Today we're going to be doing some note taking. At CanHub, I'm used to doing a lot of note taking, especially when we're reviewing content like the videos we create, the articles and so on. I write a lot of notes, but it's all done digitally. And I would like to at least start practicing my note taking skills. Just for fun, this is a hobby, I guess. So for today, I will be taking my copy of Mosby's Handbook of Anatomy and Physiology to practice writing some of my anatomy notes. I like this book because it has a quick overview of the anatomy and physiology of the human body. For example, every time I have a quick question, this is an easy book to use as a reference. When I started, I decided to just pick a random page here. And oh yeah, I arrived here at the almighty humerus. I will focus on this where you can see the interior view of the humerus. To cover some of the most important structures that you can see from the front part of this bone. And this will be more than enough for my notes today. A disclaimer before we start, I am not a super talented artist. I mean, I did okay in my art classes back in middle school, and I like to sketch here and there, but I'm rusty. I haven't done this in a while, so please be kind in the comments, okay? I will first start by sketching the humerus. I am using a mechanical pencil for this, and yes, an eraser, surprise, surprise. It's not very easy to get the shape right on this one because you want to make sure that all the landmarks are there. But the good news though is that bones are not perfect. See, this is a real humerus. Not pretty, okay? Bones are rough looking, they have holes and lines, just not as pretty as some of the other structures we have in our body. I hope I'm not offending any bone out there. Now back to me sketching, I keep trying to get my drawing as close to a humerus as possible. And at this moment, I feel that I'm quite rusty. I make a few mistakes while trying to get the humeral head right. Next, I focus on adding some lines and shading for some of the landmarks I want to label later. I believe at this point the sketching is done. It is time to add some lines. I will be using one of my favorite pens in the world. I've had them since my first year in college. That's how much I'm attached to these. They are super easy to use. I am talking about the Pentex Stick Gels, the 0.7 millimeters tip, black ink. Wow, that's a long name, but you get the point. Not sure if these are sold anymore, but let me know in the comments below. It is time to color this humorous. I will use some old coloring pencils I have. They are not the best kind, I've noticed, but I guess they will do for now. I first fill the majority of the bone with this brownish orange. Then I go in with a darker brown to highlight some of the landmarks and add a bit more contour and depth to this bone.
For the articular cartilaginous surfaces, I use a white pencil first, which in hindsight, <laughs> it was not uh, the best idea. Because then I try to add a bit of blue and it does not pick up as I wish it would. Maybe it has to do with the fact that these pencils are a bit crappy. I go back again with some brown for some additional shading. Then it is time to do some finishes by erasing some of the pencil lines. And then I go back in with my stick gel pen to fill in some of the gaps here. It is time to write the title of my notes. I will first sketch the letters using my mechanical pencil and write, well, humorous. Now I am using my flying tiger markers, blue and orange, to then color the letters. One note here that I'm not being paid by these companies to promote these products. I'm just telling you guys what I use in case you would like to go out there and purchase yourself and try to mimic a little bit of this amazing art that I'm doing. First, the orange. Then blue for a bit of contour. And the stick gel black ink pen for again a bit more contour and depth. It is time to label people. To make things easy I first add the lines where I want the labels to be using my stick gel. First, I add the tuberosities, the greater and the lesser tuberosities. Remember, the greater tuberosity is where some rotator cuff muscles attach to. Then the intertubercular groove, which separates the lesser and greater tuberosities. On the left side of this image, I will write head for the head of the humerus, which is the part of the bone that is connected to the scapula and form the shoulder joint. Further down, the deltoid tuberosity, where the deltoid muscle attaches to. The coronoid fossa, which is a depression where the coronoid process of the ulna goes into during flexion. We have the lateral epicondyle here on the right side of the image. The capitulum, which is a smooth round eminence on the lateral portion of the distal articular surface of the humerus. Next to the capitulum, we have the trochlea, which articulates with the trochlear notch of the ulna. And the final landmark on my drawing is going to be the medial epicondyle. And note here that it is a bit larger and more prominent than the lateral one. And that's it, my notes for the anterior humerus. And if you want to learn more about the anatomy of the humerus, I recommend that you check out the study unit that we have at KenHub, where you find an atlas full of beautiful images of the humerus. Believe me, the illustrators at KenHub are way better than me when it comes to drawing. In addition to the atlas, you can find super fun video tutorials and interactive quizzes for you to master this topic and a library of hundreds of articles, which is great if you want to read more about the humerus. I will leave a link in the description for this study unit at KenHub. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like the video, comment, basically let me know if you want to see more of these videos. See you next time.